Hello Daily Drafters and welcome back to the channel for today's Daily Draft. That's right, I am here as your content creator that is willing to waste his gems so you don't have to. That's been the theme of the format so far. Uh, in our last draft we got absolutely trounced by Scroll of Hive, so who's to say we can't trounce others with it now here? All you need this is on turn two once to really just uh, win pretty quickly. Unfortunately, it's also a very good pack with Tamio's Immobilizer and a Rebel Salvo in it. But maybe we wheel Eyes of Malkator and we could do like a blue-eyed artifacts with Skrelf Hive kind of thing in there. But I'm taking Skrelf's Hive pack one pick one pretty easy. Uh, ooh, this is a good pack. I don't know what to do here. Oof. Evolving Adaptive is outstanding. Hexgold Slash is outstanding. And Cephalopod Sentry is a deck I have not drafted and really want to draft. I think the correct pick here is Evolving Adaptive. You know what? I gotta take Evolving Adaptive, don't I? This card is just too good. In a format where one and two drops are so important, the best one drop in basically the entire set has to be the pick, right? So let's take Evolving Adapt Adaptive and see where to go from there. Ooh, Tamiyo's Immobilizer pick three. There's also a Basilica Shepherd and a Rustvine Cultivator here. The best card in this pack is Tamiyo's Immobilizer. Man, if I hadn't been tempted by the Skrelves Hive in pack one pick one, Immobilizer into Sentry into Immobilizer is a heck of a start for blue-white. But I'm just not sure that's our path right now. We have a Basilica Shepherd here, a card I'm okay on i mean we're looking to be pretty toxic aggressive in this deck um i think i'm gonna take the shepherd over the immobilizer here and and just regret the blue deck that's going by me unfortunately <laughs> oh there's a titanic growth and a flensing raptor but that's it in our colors i have not been a huge fan of flensing raptor but it is good with something like scrove's hive So I think I'm going to take it here. Really not much else. We're going to have to hope we can find some of the green, white, gold, uncommon, and and things like that. I mean, we're not locked into, uh, gosh, Thrumming Bird, Surgical Skull Bomb, and no green, and no white cards, except Gold Warden's Helm, which I don't like. So let's take the Skull Bomb here and see if See if blue-white ends up being open. I'm going to take that over the Thrumming Bird. We're not looking to be much of a proliferate kind of deck here. So we'll take the Skull Bomb. And then there's the Slaughter Singer. So what do you want from me? <laughs> Give me a signal! Um, yeah, I guess we're taking Slaughter Singer. That's outstanding with Skrelv's Hive. So, yeah. And look to be an aggressive white green toxic deck now here. Yeah, yeah, duelist of deep faith. Okay, yeah, we found our route. That was just a bad pack for us, the one with the with the skull bomb in it. There's a shepherd. I, I probably play two, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the duelist of deep faith here and probably just head down a white green toxic route. Already three two drops. Well, two two drops. Which is better than we ended up with on on Friday's video. Staff of Completion. Yeah, no. Um, Copper Long Legs. Also, no. Although it can proliferate. Do I just Mythic Rare Draft here? No, I don't care about that. I don't draft enough to be able to have this count as gems for me. So, I'm just going to take the Long Legs. I'm just going to throw in the sideboard. I don't really care about that card right now. Eye of Alquator did wheel. Immobilizer did not. So there's the Atrocity. I have not liked this card since like week one. Oh, the Sentry came back. Oh, we could have had such a great deck. Maybe this is playable in our deck, but probably not. Still not great. No, not Orthodox Oxy Enforcer. Titanic Growth, maybe. Gold Warden's Helm. The only white card did wheel out of the back, which is noteworthy. <laughs> well, Skrelv's Hive is good on two, and if you have two of them, 
a good chance you might end up playing it on turn two. It's also a planar disruption, but I'm not going to pass up on a second to scroll up hive. Why would I do that? Whoa, hi, hello there, Kaya. Um. Well. I don't like Plague Nurse. Although it's quite good with Double Scrolls Hive. That's very good with it. I don't like Vanquish New Eternity. And we'd have to give up on Slaughter Singer and Evolving Adaptive and go into like a controlling deck to take Kaya here. I don't think I can do that. It's a great card, don't get me wrong, but I don't think I can afford to do that. I think Plague Nurse Wheels. I'm going to have to take the Rustvine Cultivator here. Felt bad, but I think it's what I'm supposed to do. All right, Ruthless Predation, a little bit of a removal spell. Wouldn't mind wheeling a Maze Skull Bomb. Let's go ahead and take Ruthless Predation. And ideally not playing this either because of the presence of Hex Gold Slash in the format. This, is, this could probably be improved. Titanic Growth, maybe. Rustvine Cultivator, maybe. Anchor Bloom, hello. It's also a Charge of the Mites, which would be great in our deck, but Canker Bloom is the exact kind of two drop you want in this format. Sinew Dancer or Charge of the Mites Wheeling would be good for us. Either of these I think would slot right into the deck, but we're going to take another great two drop here. Another great two drop into a list of Deep Faith and continue along the great two drop route. So blue-eyed artifacts was open in pack one by a lot, but I think we're going to end up with a fine deck here. I mean, look at our two drops already. It's looking great. We're going to have to make sure we don't die to our own hive, but I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. Possible invasion too expensive. Basilica Shepherd, Ickerspit, Baskalis, ba Baskal, blah, 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 blah. Colossal Chair Maw. And Incubation Shack. I don't think this is an Incubation Sack deck. We're just much more aggressive. And just another 3-drop with Toxic that they have to block. Seems like something we want. Over the Sack here. I think Sack is a better pack 1 pick 1. Actually, I know it is. But if we can keep our curve super low, play 16 lands in this deck. Maybe even 15. I mean, that's exactly what we're looking to do. Lattice Blade Mantis, Dune Mover, another two drop with Toxic. I mean, helps us hit our land drops if we're screwed. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I mean, I think this might be the first deck I've drafted all format that is very dedicated to getting the opponent dead through poison damage. Which is better, Basilica or Maze? Probably Basilica Skull Bomb. Terramorphic Expanse, we don't need, so I'll take the Skull Bomb. I don't know if we'll play it. It'll be close. Maze's Mantle, three mana, plus two, plus two. If it has Toxic, it gains Hexproof. Well, I'm not playing anything else in this pack, so... I'll put it over here. I'll put this over here. We have a lot of options out of the sideboard here. I'm just going to put what I know 100% will make the deck right now. Pretty sure this is where I'm at with a bunch of options options in the sideboard. <laughs> Someone take a screenshot of this pack. Oh my gosh. <laughs> This is one of the more wild scenarios that has ever happened in a draft. Pick 10, Kaya. Now, we're not going to play it, but I don't think we're playing anything in this either. Let's take the maze, I guess. All right, Sinew Dancer did come back. What do we like? Pick 10, Kaya. That's just wild. All right. Ossification. 
pretty good removal spell here. I'm really, really hoping that we can get access to the uh, the uncommon toxic um, thing that like tucks one of their creatures underneath it for as long as it's on the battlefield. But we'll be happy with an ossification here for sure. Miglo's Maze Crusher. Armored Scrap Gorger, Mandible Justice. I think it's the Scrap Gorger here. I mean, I don't think we need to splash the Maze Crusher as good as it is. Don't anticipate wheeling anything of note out of this pack. So we'll take the Scrap Gorger here. I don't think I actually want either of these. Maybe one of them, but since we're such an aggressive deck... Tap lands are not good for us. Not a plated onslaught deck. Complete devotion. That could be good for us. We have a bunch of toxic creatures. Another hex gold slash. Atrocity, no thank you. Lean and Lightbringer, no thank you. So let's go ahead and take the take the devotion here and see if. See if that ends up being good for us. I think it will be. Incisor Glider in a Toxic deck. Over Razor Verge Thicket. Really nothing else for us here. Again, no one's in Black White. This thing might wheel again. Maybe it was worth moving into Black White for, um, for Kaya, but like... We're not playing anything here. But I don't know, we had like Slaughter Singer, just a very good Crawling Chorus, a very good aggressive toxic deck here. Maze Skull Bomb, potentially. The Bladehold War Whip's going around. What are people drafting? No black white, no red white, no green white, because we're getting everything we need. See, Incisor Glider, Flensing Raptor, all this is coming around. What are people drafting here? A bunch of red. There's like a pick four or five hex gold slash too, though. Incisor Glider, I guess. Yeah, I like that better than a Flimsing Raptor. Both of the lands wield. This wield as well. We already have one of these and one of these and one of these and one of these. <laughs> Let's get the full play set. No, I don't know. Um, I don't think we're playing any of this stuff. Mandible just to see her, but that doesn't really go well in our deck. We have all of the two drops in the entire draft in our deck. Look, all the green and white cards came back. Alright, interesting deck build here to see exactly how we want to build this. We're, we're a very aggressive toxic deck, obviously. Clearly 16 lands, maybe even 15. Um, everything here is good so far. So what else are we playing? We just kind of want anything with Toxic on it, right? I mean, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of this card because of Hex Gold Slash, but if they don't have Hex Gold Slash, I mean, it's going to deal some damage. Um, Cultivator... It's not good enough, right? Copper long legs. We, we're not hurting for two drops here. Anything else with toxic in the sideboard? No. Well, these two. This has to be good in our deck. If there's ever a deck that this is going to be good in, it's got to be ours, right? Um, maybe a copy of Cultivator is fine. We do have to get two more cards here. They're going to be incentivized to block, so Titanic Growth might not be bad. Maybe another one of these? What else would I be playing? A Mandible Justiciar? A Basilica Skull Bomb to jump something into the air?
a maze skull bomb to give something trample. Seventeen creatures and a bunch of toxic here. I mean, I think it's good enough. I'm questioning the second atrocity. The only thing is I don't know what to put in over it. My thought would be one of these two, but if it's not a creature, it really has to hold its weight. And I think everything here except the Zealot's Conviction and the Titanic Growth do that. But they're, they're good combat tricks. Again, our opponents are going to be incentivized to block, which means we're going to be incentivized to use combat tricks to get through them. So, all right, well, win or lose, this will probably be a quick draft for you all. Hopefully we're able to see our Skrelves hives more than zero games. So I'll see you in game one. All right, we are on the play with Adaptive into Duelist, which is a great start here. Going to need to find our lands to get out of any other kind of flood, but even turn three glider pumps the Adaptive one more as well, so it's all good. Now the question is, if they play a two mana two two or something, do I attack into it? Probably so. My guess is they have Hex Gold Slash. <laughs> and we'll see if they want to use it on one of these two creatures. Here it comes. Ooh, Experimental Augury. That's fine. I can deal with that. Trawler Drake is a good card, but not right now. Playing this pre-combat so I can get the counter. Sawblade Scamp. And what else? Mesmerizing Dose. Yep. And Proliferate. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and jump the Duelist here. Looks like poison won't matter this game. We're just going to try to get them to zero before poison happens. Okay. Got Titanic Growth to get rid of the Serum Core Chimera. Still not corrupted over there. But a land off the top brings four more hasty power to the board. Or to the game. Although this blocker is great right now. It's doing a lot of work. Hmm. 
Okay. Are they going to be able to outrace us here? No. Okay. So we attack with everything. They take one, two, three, four, five, and go to three and eat the atrocity here. But then they're corrupted, and then this will be able to pump the rest of the team next turn. They'll be at three. This and this will be lethal threats. I should have just played Basilix this turn, I think. I'm going to full send here. Can't do that. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, opponent. That just means you die. Whoops. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what they had, but if they had blocked there, we, we would have had lethal next turn. If they played any blocker on the ground, then we wouldn't have. So it was a very, very close decision there. I don't know exactly what to do in that spot. It was a tough one. But we got the win. Alright, so this hand is an interesting one. We can cast Armored Scrap Gorger, which can then cast the rest of our hand. The question is, is it keepable? If they kill the Armored Scrap Gorger, we are in trouble. We could also find that we have a lot of outs here. I think I'm going to keep it. If we didn't, if this was any other card in our deck except a Plains, I would not be keeping this. But because of the Scrap Gorger, we can play this on two, Hive on three, and then just start going nuts. Or just not have to do any of that <laughs> and be totally fine play hive on two and then be off to the races here you better believe if i draw another scrolls hive i'm playing it <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, many efficiency says to do this. Unfortunately, we can't get, we won't get anything out of this trigger. Now, if we play the Scrap Gorger next turn, we could play this and one of these two. We can pump one of these and attack with it. I'm going to play the Flensing Raptor. It has Toxic itself, so it will be able to attack. And we are going to have to race. We're playing against Red-White, and we're dealing a damage to ourselves every turn, so I'm going to have to try to get some attackers down here. And that will probably swing the race in their favor. Unfortunately. Yeah, I think we have to block. Can't quite attack with this yet. We can starting next turn depending on depending on what else they have. But looks like they're quite nervous to dying to Toxic here, so they may not even attack. Chimney Rabble. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Take seven? I don't like it, but, um... Yeah, I don't like that either. The 
see if they make themselves corrupted or not. No, they won't. Smart move by them. I think I have to hold up Sinew Dancer and not play Dune Mover here. Oh, wait. No, I can do both. Yes, because of the Scrap Forger. Alright, that's good. Almost messed that one up. Yeah, all these things make this very difficult for me. <laughs> when you have all of the best cards for your archetype. Yeah. We have to start pushing some Toxic here, otherwise we're going to lose. We're at six, and we're taking one a turn, so... Probably have to chump with Scrap Gorger. Oh my god, what did I do? Well, I misclicked, that's what I did. Yeah, that was uh that was not good. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Let's see if we can get ourselves out of it here. Do they have another one? No other creature. So that's good. We can put them to one, or put them to nine. Can we survive? I mean... The mites don't block, so we have no choice but to attack with those. Um, that's a lethal threat, so we can get rid of that. And we attack here. We can't attack with these two. Put them to two life, effectively. End the turn, tap down this one, and chump that one. Oh my gosh, we're at 10. <laughs> I forgot we had lifelink when they're corrupted. Oh, that's the additional one of that. Okay, yeah, that um, that, that helps. Forgot about that. <laughs> as long as an opponent has three or more poison counters. Courageous you control with toxic have lifelink, so that's important. Probably could have attacked here. Yeah, so that's double punt this, this game. <laughs> Just clicking through this. Hopefully it doesn't come back to fight to bite us here. 
I love how they put this corrupted clause on here. I had totally forgotten about that one. Makes it a lot better of a card. Okay, that resolves. No need to get cute and try to take extra damage here, so... Just gonna go ahead and jump and get in with the Toxic Mites. Alright, we did it! <laughs> Perfect! <laughs> Never didn't have it, am I right? I'll tighten it up. Well, the play would be better, but I'll take it. Skrelv's Hive, let's go! Turn to Skrelv's Hive again. And... off we go. Stinging Hive Master, sure. Um, I'll... Yeah, I'll play the Basilisk here. I don't think I'm blocking. This is probably a race we win. We also have a combat trick and a removal spell to get rid of that if we want to. Got another one, okay. Well, land would have been nice. So I'm wondering if I just canker bloom Zealot's Conviction right now. Or if I predation one of these and then conviction. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I know it's kind of like two for wanting myself, but we got this for free. We killed their entire three drop with it. They get a mite, but like whatever. We'll play our two drop and then pass it back. Probably just trade this off with their hive master. We have removal. Okay. They're just mono black? No, they're looking for green. All right. Okay, what do you have for one green? Evolving Adaptive. Yeah. Okay. Think... The most man-efficient thing to do here is Ruthless Predation plus Duelist of Deep Faith. But I'm wondering if Predation... We, we can do Ossification next turn as well if they play something better. So let's do... This will also get us... get them Corrupted. Which will be very good for our Skrelv's Hive. So let's do... Here. Duelist of Deep Faith. Get them corrupted. And then we have a removal spell. All of our creatures on the battlefield have lifelink. So that's pretty darn good. Another one. Okay, good, good. Okay. 
Well, not good. Now they're going to fight our Duelist of Deep Faith, unfortunately, so... Well, no, they already used their green. Death Touch and Indestructible? Is that what they have? Minus one, minus one. Okay. Well, at least it trades. They do get another counter here. Oh, they do? Okay. Wow, that was quite the turn for them. Well, we are kind of mana screwed. <laughs> I can attack here, but they can just choose not to block. I mean, it's probably better on blocks at this point. Guess I'll do this. Send it back. Now they're at six mana. They got all things in the world they could do. Lattice Blade Mantis. Yeah, I mean, as long as we have this Basilisk, I think we're okay. And I'm probably fine just trading this off now that we can ossification their mantis here. Okay. God. I would very much like <laughs> to not be so color screwed right now. We're gaining six off of this, no matter what. If they choose to block a 2-2, two -two, we can complete Devotion, maybe hitting a Plains and get lucky. <laughs> so now the question becomes, do we trade for the Mantis, or do we kill the Aspirant? And I think I'm going to just keep my might around, kill the Aspirant, hit the planes, and off we go. 19. Just go ahead and play our creature. Attack for a ton next turn. I mean, this is 9 points of lifelink if both of these survive an attack, which is just insane. So that's probably good enough for us. <laughs> I could block here, but like, they didn't look like they had priority. They're hitting us for nine right now. We have a ton of lifelink. Six poison. Gotta watch out a little bit on that front, but okay, that's fine. Woo, baby. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> that should do it. Nice. That was good. That might have just been enough to kill them from 11. <laughs> Alright, turn two, Skrelv's Eye again. I mean, I'm not going to complain. It's hard to send this one back. Incisor Glider, yeah, it's a good blocker against our Mites. Woo, baby! Let's go! <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, we're doing it. Let's see if we can survive long enough. I have Malkatoria. That's probably not going to do it.
double Skrull's hive on the battlefield. Let's go. Achievement unlocked. Another two drop would be great. Something like anything to any two drop with toxic would be outstanding. Nah, not quite. We'll survive. Although this can sacrifice to destroy either one of these. That is also an artifact, notably. So we might do that on their turn. To get rid of a blocker. Make them corrupted. Clear a path for the Tyranax atrocity. Well, that's not what you wanted to do. Um, destroy target artifact. I think I'll destroy their incisor glider. And do they have another blocker? They do. Well, they will still become corrupted here. As we will play this. And then get in with all of this. Holding back the Sinew Dancer here. That way we can use this to tap things down. And now we have all kinds of lifelink on the board. We are effectively at 9 right now for the moment. So we're going to have to watch out on that front. But if this survives, okay. All right, so we're at we attack with this. We go to seven. We take. We go to this. Take to go to five, and then we gain another eight. We're back at thirteen. I think we can afford to take it here. Wait, do we just win? Yeah, we just win if we tap them down. I forgot about that. Okay, so five attackers. Tap down target creature. You can't block. And then we hit them for a lethal. Ten po 12 poison. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what a start. Double scroll of I'm not sure that's beatable. <laughs> turn two, turn three. <laughs> Look, keep giving me the great hands. I'm going to keep keeping them. <laughs> I mean, Hive on two. There's a possibility we can go Scrap Gorger on two, Hive on three, along with one of these two things. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I want to play that. Okay... Huh. What's the play here? Start out with the Hive, get that going, play Basilisk next turn, play Scrap Gorger and Dune Mover the following turn. Or Scrap Gorger now, and then Hive next turn along with the Dune Mover. Well, this hasn't... hasn't ever gone south for me yet, so I'll go ahead and play Hive on two here. Probably Basilisk next turn, depending on what we draw. Okay, no oil counters right now. Let's go ahead and play this. Hopefully it survives. It does not. Okay. Play another creature. Yep. 
Just an artifact, not an artifact or enchantment, so that's good for us. I'm going to go ahead and play the Incisor Glider right now. It's a much better blocker on this board than the Dune Mover. them have good attacks now. Plus one, plus one. Their deck is not very synergistic. This cares about toxic, this cares about corrupted, this cares about oil, this cares about nothing, but it's still beating us here. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I thought that might have been coming. <laughs> Still don't have attacks, unfortunately. Gotta find a way to get them corrupted here so we can get lifelink, because otherwise we're not really doing much. One of the fight spells would be great, or the bite spell to use with the basilisk on something, that would be pretty good here. Okay. See if they have a combat trick. They could. It also could just be the furnace. Um, if I block like this and they have a trick, it's pretty bad for us, right? I mean, yes, but I can't just keep taking this and then not get lifelink and keep taking one every turn as well, right? We have nothing else in hand. See if they have the combat trick here. Yeah, it looks like they do. Yep. Well, that sucks. Okay. I mean, I could throw away three mites to deal one damage to them. I can destroy the planar disruption, which would be very good. don't have to do it on attacks though. I do need to get them corrupted, but having this now is going to be good for us. Okay, down to two mana for the turn. Okay. Have to take one more here. From 
trample damage. Oh wait, no, it's at 3-4, not 4-3, okay. So let's do this. Sounds about right. Um, We still can't get them corrupted yet. So we'll go ahead and pass. And uh, not looking too great. A little bit of a flood for us here, so that's not good. Not sure. We have to draw something. Yeah, that's going to be tough as well. We can get them corrupted now, but at the expense of dying. <laughs> well, that blocks, so... Gotta get them corrupted. We don't really have any choice here. Actually, we just we're just dead. We don't we don't have any out here. <laughs> Can block this, block that, take four and die. So yeah, because these won't get um, these won't get lifelink until after it gets corrupted, and they can't block. So Maybe they don't go for it, though, because they might be dead on the backswing, but I think they go for it. I mean, if they go for it, if they use the Porcelain Zealot to pump the Incisor Glider, then they win. So let's see if they go for that. And then attack with all, I mean. They might also just have a Combat Trick or a Volt Charge or something in hand. In which case, we also lose. Yeah, our Scrolls Hive didn't quite do it this game. We could not push through with our mites. So they've got lethal. It's just a question of do they want to go for it. Okay. Maybe we live. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we eat this one and chump this one and go to one. Doesn't, I mean, we can exile something from their yard if we want to. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Not dead. Oh, dead. <laughs> okay. Fair. Yeah. Could not ever get past their the defenses there. Their deck was not particularly good, but good enough to beat us. All right. Great turn. Or great hand here. Crawling Chorus on one. Tool to Deep Faith on two. Mulligan by from the opponent. Let's take it and run with it. Hopefully no one drop from them. Aha. Alright, and if they don't play a two drop, we have them corrupted. Ooh, baby. It's going to be tough for them to come back from this. And an incisor glider now. <laughs> what a curve. This is the downside of the format. If you are on the receiving end of this, it feels so bad. <laughs> they do have interaction now, though. It could be um, Whisper of the Dross to kill the Crawling Chorus, but, well... 
Who knows? What is it? What do you got? A concession. Yeah, this is the downside of one. Although, if you if you built your dec your deck correctly, as I did, it's an upside. <laughs> okay, we go first with, once again, a turn two Skrulls Hive if we want it. We could also play Doom Mover, get a green, play Hive and Cultivator on, on three. But, I mean, we're keeping the hand here. I think this is more valuable than getting this down one turn sooner. We have to make sure we hit our land drop so we can just... Next turn, do this and this, or... Yeah, there we go. So now we can get in there, play our hive, play our cultivator. Next turn, we have Flensing Raptor to jump the Dune Mover. Be one away from Corrupted, and then we can go from there. Ooh, the full teamer. What else you got? Miglos. Yeah, three mana, four, four. That'll be good. <laughs> uh... Raptor can jump the Dune Mover, or Basilisk can block this well. No, it can't really, because it could just keep getting Menace. So let's do this. Give it here. Does this have reach? No. Okay, they're at two poison. Gonna have to tap this for an oil counter. Vigilance and Menace. Man, this card is good. Ooh. Alright, well, that blocks well as well. It'll be difficult to get them corrupted here. At the expense of taking six damage a turn or five damage a turn or whatever. Something I could do is use all of my lands, tap this to tap that, get them corrupted. Which would give all of these creatures lifelink. Or I can just play out my hand here. I think I will opt for this line. Gosh, the difference between two and three poison counters for us right now is a lot, so maybe I should have just gotten them corrupted. Turn three Miglos is gonna be hard to get past. Not to mention, they can just... They can activate the last one here to get rid of our Skrelv's Hive as well, so... What else can they do? Give it plus two, plus two? Oh, well, we don't have good blocks against that. Because, yeah, they can destroy artifact or enchantment here, so. Yeah, it looks like they will. Okay. Well. Predation not looking outstanding. Not bad against the Observer. Actually, that would get them corrupted to make this better. This can tap for mana right now. So what if we did... This... A single blue. I don't think they have anything for a single blue.
They could just give this Vigilance and Menace. So let's do this. That'll get them corrupted here now. That means this can be activated for a single mana. They're also just at 9, which is notable. What else you got? You got a lot of mana, a lot of colors over there. Volt Charge, the Incisor Glider, that's probably okay. I mean, I'd prefer if you didn't, but... Prophetic Prism, that's totally fine. We don't have lethal on them right now, notably. That's probably not what you wanted to do. Go to my turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Go ahead and just get this in here. Leave that tap ability. Um, this will get bigger for next turn as well. We can play this one on the backswing. Just get them down to two here. Seven toxic. Yeah, now they're they're just dead so many ways, I think. I mean I guess a board wipe <laughs> would save them, but I'm trying to think of board wipes that aren't White Sun's Twilight. There's Blue Sun's Twilight. Okay. Still should be fine. Yeah. Blue Sun's Twilight is good, except when all my creatures are like two twos and two ones and one ones. <laughs> Alright, we are in the draw, and this is a hand I think we have to send back. It does Stone Cold nothing. We can't cast this. These are so far away, so unfortunately we have to send that one back. And keep six here. Probably send back the Zealot's Conviction... That way we can go adaptive, remove their two drop, play a raptor maybe. Ooh, that's nice as well. Good curve here. Barbed batter fist, yeah, that's a good one. Um Question is, do I trade this off? Do I try to race here? This won't be triggering that next turn if we do play it. It's not a race we win, but... I think I'm willing to trade my one drop for their two drop. And they missed a land. Okay, well... We won't punish you too much for it. Okay, another mountain. What's your three drop? Aspirant Furnace Punisher. Okay. We can kill that with Ruthless Predation. And 
And I think I will go ahead and do so. Play this here. Attack with the Raptor. Next turn, this will be attacking as a 3-3. Three, three. Alright, they found their green. What do you got now? Chimney Rabble. Okay. Go back to my turn. Top deck of land. So whenever this becomes tapped, exile card from a graveyard, put an oil counter at three or more. It has plus three plus O, which means we can afford to do this. Taxes a 3-3. Three, three. Trades off with their Chimney Rebel. And unfortunately, we need to draw some gas. Let's see if we can do that. Another Chimney Rebel. Yeah, that holds back our Duelist. That is some gas. <laughs> As they say. Just gonna trade for a rabble and a 1 1, but I mean. Did something. Made them corrupted. This duelist now has attacks if they don't play anything better. Although I'm expecting. Okay, that's fine. That's. Quit it with the freaking chimney rabbles! Okay. I'll decline and end the turn. We, again, our, our creatures are small and they are at six mana now. So they, they could just play their, their fifth chimney rabble. Incubation sack. Yeah, yeah. If I can get rid of this Chimney Rabble, we have attacks. Not bad. That can just destroy their Incubation Sack, I guess. What are they getting priority for? Oh, they can put an oil counter on that? That's fine. Okay. Didn't want to do that. <laughs> um... Play the Canker Bloom, and then I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and get rid of their Incubation Sack. Just three mana kill their Incubation Sack. I mean, they got the better mana value, or the mana off of that. They spent one, we spent three, and we both spent a card. But it was going to get them nine power and toughness over the course of the next couple turns here. Alright, so this tells me that they have a good blocker that they're going to play, at least an X3 on blocks, but I can't block it, so here comes a creature. Oh, they're just going to trade that for the Dune Mover. Okay, I see what you did. Again, we need some gas. We need some gas here. This race is close. That's some gas. There's certainly some gas. Okay, they chump. Remove two oil counters. When it attacks, you can remove two, so they can't do it more than once. Hit a land. There we go. Okay.
All right, I'm gonna get rid of their chimney rabble. That way this can attack. Play the Basilisk. End of the turn. And one more land off the top for them and we should have it. That is not a land off the top, but we still have it. All right, seven and one with a heck of a green-white deck here, man. That was quite the deck. I think the only game we lost, we had Skrelv's Hive on turn two, and they just played a bunch of X, like X2s and X3s, and we couldn't get through it. But sweet deck here. I mean, uh, it still wasn't even perfect, honestly. We had a couple of Tyranax atrocities that I would like something different in that spot. Zealot's Conviction. I mean, there was room to improve the deck. Pick 10 Kaya. I mean, today's draft was just all over the place in a great way. So um, hopefully you were entertained by that. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video, and I will see you next time for your daily draft.